This is beyond special. It is a brand new Stutka. What do they got in here? What is this? Are those like battle damage? Ooh, it looks like it looks like it crashed and that's a that's a wing spar sitting on the bottom of that and it looks like it crashed because this wing spar is bent in and and it looks like the rest of it's sitting up there but guys will make new airplanes out of these parts that's why they're sitting here this stuff is history and it's irreplaceable and you can already see some new stuff being made. And they'll keep duplicating things. And it looks to me like they've finished the wings. These wings look like they're completely restored, which means, do they suspiciously look like this? Just look at the rivet lines. Look at the rivet lines on the back of this and see if we're looking at the same airplane. We are, you can even see like these aileron features. So these wings are built to new. Couldn't use that one, but they <laughs> took a good look at it. And they've obviously finished rebuilding the hub on that propeller. The blades don't have a single nick on them. That thing's zero timed. And here's the here's the motor. Nice uh, view of an inverted V engine. That's how it was mounted in the plane. And so you can see in this engine mount, pretty pretty cool. See how it's mounted, it's held on by these guys. Well, in the plane, you see the big round holes. Well, there'd be rubber mounts there. And the engine is held across like that, vibrating away in there. Kind of a weird, you know. Somebody must be working on plexiglass somewhere. Because this airplane had a lot of plexi. What a beautiful looking wing. And here's an example of what they started with. Right next to the real piece, eh? Where did this piece come from? I think it's kind of peeled open. I think it's this piece right here. It is. So you can see how they built a new plane out of it. Look at this tail, it's new. <laughs> it's all brand new. Because this thing's gonna be pretty sp special. Engine mounts are on. They got a prop for it. Pretty big, eh? Huge. This Stutka is an R4 version modified to fly long distances. It was built in 1941 and destined for North Africa before being diverted to the fighting in Russia, serving with a Lurgeschwader demonstration wing, one, and then Sturzumkanzterschwader, a dive bomber, wing five. The plane operated in Northwest Russia near the border with Finland and Norway. The aircraft was on a mission to bomb Murmask in April of 1942 when it was attacked by Soviet fighters and crashed well into the west of the city. The record remained in the wilderness until early 1990s when it was acquired by a private collector and shipped to England. The rare plane was eventually obtained by the German M Museum of Technology in Br Berlin in 1997. The Flying Heritage and Combat Armor Museum began a restoration to flying condition on this rare and imported aircraft in 2013. This is one of only three surviving Stutkas left in the world. How is that possible that there's only three of these things? And here's a look at a brand new wing. Very new. Resurrection in progress.
built brand new. The motor's over there, ready to go. The wings are brand spanking new. And here's some of the stuff that it was made from. Here's an original wing. And they didn't feel like using any of these parts. They use plans and they measure all this stuff to make their pieces. And then they make an entirely new one. Fact of the matter is, construction techniques of the Second World War were advanced, but they're everyday ordinary for shops today. So here's a pair of brand new wings manufactured from scratch. Boy, would I have loved to be a part of that. Here's a whole bunch of more parts they've made. An original piece on the top there. I would love to see the, the plans they have for this thing. They must have plans. There's a canopy being built up. Big heavy frame. The wing has flush rivets on the front half and round heads on the back half. The front half of the wing has the most pressures. But completely brand new. They even pound, you know, they pound their own ribs and pound the block. I mean, wing spar right there, trailing edge spar. Look at those wheel pants. That is made on what's called an English wheel. Let's go have a look at that fuselage. Oh, here's the sign. The Stutka dive bomber became the symbol of Germany's swift and terrifying blitzkrieg tactics in the early years of World War II. Dropping nearly vertical from 15,000 feet and up to 370 miles per hour, the Stutka could deliver its bombs with pinpoint accuracy. The intimidating nature of the attack was often supplemented by a pair of screaming propeller-driven sirens nicknamed Jericho Trumpets. Although it was a somewhat antiquated design, the crude-looking Stutka was amazingly tough its stout airframe being specifically for the stress of high-speed dives and crushing pull-out procedures. Each wing featured an automatically deployed pull-up dive brake that helped the plane recover from a dive even if the pilot blacked out due to intense g-forces. The plane however was slow and vulnerable when pitted against modern combat planes. As the losses mounted, Stutkas were shifted away from the Western Front and saw sustained service as tank busters on the Eastern Front with the Luftwaffe air superiority lasted longer. Some Stuttgas even participated in the defense of Berlin in 1945. Well, here's a whole bunch of stuff to read. Similar to the Spitfire Zero, the distinctive Junkers J87 Stuttgas became the symbol of, of its nation. The fearsome plane also became an emblem of Nazi aggression during World War II. Images of the wickedly angular aircraft poised in screaming steep dives, were seen around the world in magazines and newsreels covering Germany's Swiss, covering Germany's swift offensive actions of 1939 and 1940. The ensuing years of hard fighting and abuse, only a pair of the planes made it into museums. One today resides at the Royal Air Force Museum and the other hangs in Chicago's Museum of Science and Industry. Wow, that's it? With the plane's engineering drawing, drawing seemingly lost to history, the MSI staff and leadership were a crucial part of bringing this Stutka back to life. While their aircraft was temporarily brought down for maintenance, the Flying Heritage Combat and Armory Museum was able to acquire a detailed laser scan of the plane. That's a good idea. This data gives restorers an unprecedented digital blueprint to resurrect the Stutka. Or the outer skin. <laughs> Karl Verzak, a restorer in Hungary, began the project of rebuilding the plane's intricate structure and metalwork. After nearly five years of work, the plane was shipped to the USA, where Flying Heritage Combat Armor and Museum staffers have taken over the process. The goal is to return a Stutka to flying status, which involves rebuilding all of the plane's complex 
flight systems. We hope you will return to the Heritage Flying Combat Armor Museum to see this unique and important combat aircraft one day return to the skies over Painfield. I wish I could walk over there and stick my camera in it. Here's a real piece of it, right next to what they've built. Pretty fantastic.